Hey yo everybody, Haku here with my review of Tower of God Chapter 287, uh, review. Yeah, Season 2, Episode 207, I think that would be. I always get confused with the numbers, like, between chapter and episode and stuff, but it being 80 apart, I guess that's, like, a even enough, um, even enough number that it's not that difficult to remember. But, um, I... Uh, I'll start off by saying I really liked this one, but there's one thing about it that really pisses me off that I think uh, really takes away from it a bit. But start, starting out from the beginning and going over it, we um, pick up with the Rack and Indiana fight, so amazing. I'm really liking this fight, and I really did like this fight, and it went on for what, like, it's been going on three chapters now, but... I don't know, whenever we cut to it, I just really enjoy, like, both of those characters and seeing them fight. Um, so, we continue with that a little, and we find out that only two other people have lasted this long in a fight with, um, in a fight with, uh, Inietta. Why did my mind go blank there? But, so, one of them, obviously, I think we're all presuming to be Kaiser, and, uh, the other... Maybe it's one of the other ten bosses. They didn't defeat Inietta, but they were strong enough to last a long time in a fight with them. Because um, I'm hoping we at least have another boss that's really strong and going to be difficult to, for us to defeat. But honestly, thinking about it, Inietta was so badass this chapter, I don't know how they're going to take him out. Like, maybe Boro or Hatsu could do it, but like if, if he can defeat Yiwa, Danwa, and Rack all at once, like... It's going to take some real strength to uh, defeat Inietta. But getting ahead of myself there. So we do find out that Rack has sort of a special instinct, like his animal instincts or whatever, and um, he can't, like, he can't find an opening to deal any damage to Inietta because of the uh, REA swordsmanship, even when he thinks he's found a blind spot, like the blade comes at him from somewhere else. Which is, of course, like what Bomb struggled with the first time that he met um, Joaquin. Then uh, Dan Juan Yua show up in clutch, of course, and we get the title card and cut to Ship and Hatsu, and Hatsu is all angry because um, of his fight and slash argument with Kuhn, and Ship like, is like, you know, we know it's our fault, but it's like, we didn't really have a choice. It was a crappy thing we did, and we still want to be Bomb's friends, we still are Bomb's friends, we just, in the moment, we felt that's what we had to do, because again, all Andrassi's fault, she put us in this situation. He didn't say it was Andrassi's fault, but it pretty much is, like, they, they wouldn't have done any of that if Andrassi didn't do a stupid and, like, force them, force them into that predicament, I suppose. Um, from going, going from there, we actually, I'm pretty sure we cut straight back to the, um, Rakan and Yetta stuff with, um, Yuwa and Danwa showing up, and they actually have a really, really badass attack, and I love how Rack gets angry and tells them to go away, and then Inietta's completely unharmed by it. He goes after Yiwa because he's like, somebody from the Yeon family is going to be really, really troublesome, so I should probably go for you first. So he goes for her, but Danwa intercepts him, and freaking Dan, like, I loved, I loved seeing Danwa actually put in some work, knock him back. It was really, really cool. And Rack, Rack's reaction to it was perfect, too, where he's like, no, my prey. I really, really loved that. Going on from there, we have, um, we have Warian's group, and she's leading her group of scrubs away from all the combat, so they're just staying out of this. Then we see, um, the Iruro, Sachi, and Boro group, and Lulu is spying on them from the woods and saying, you know, Sachi's too strong for us to capture, at least if he has allies with him, so maybe they're going to be trying to separate Sachi from the rest, or... I don't know, because Sachi, if Sachi is, like, about Kaiser level, then Sachi should be able to take one of the ten bosses on his own, at least. Um, and we also see, it looks like Variel Vani's men entering a room, sneaking past um, Ron and Dan while Ron is sleeping and Dan's trying to wake him up. And the room they're going into that they were guarding, I couldn't think of any other room it would be except Ship and Hatsu's room, unless it was maybe the room that Anok's in, but I doubt it. So we might get Variel Vani and his men versus Ship and Hatsu, which would be a really, really cool uh, fight as well. It'd be really fun to see, at least. 
So then we actually cut back to our main fight, our main action, and Inietta drinks some booze, and he uses this power-up, I guess drunken swordsmanship or whatever, to uh, knock the sword out of Danwa's hand. He ends up using his incredibly fast speed at this point to steal Krishna, and then is able to use Krishna's ignition to take down Danwa. Then he again uses the ignition with his REA swordsmanship to one-shot Yiwa. And then, of course, wh when his girl is harmed, Rack goes full Big Rack again, and I was so happy, so hyped. And then we get robbed. We we get Elliot'd again. And what I mean by that is, like, Elliot was built up. Elliot fought evenly with Bomb in Thorn Rage mode. Elliot was strong enough to be able to kill Muntari, who Beta and Ron struggled with. So, like... Elliot defeated him, and then we get this awesome hype build-up for Bomb versus Elliot, and it looks really badass, and then we cut away and we don't see the end of the fight. And that's what happened here. For like two or three chapters, we've built up this amazing fight with Inietta and Rack, and then we cut away and don't get to see the end of the fight. So that's, ah, it just, it, it really annoys me, it really pisses me off, and I honestly think it's a bad choice too, because I would have been so down for the rest of this chapter, or even if they devoted half or even all of next chapter to finishing up the Rack and Inietta fight, I wouldn't have minded it because it was really good. And like, it was exciting, it was good for the story, and I really enjoyed seeing it, so I wouldn't have minded if we devoted another half or even whole chapter to finishing the fight out. So I am really, really disappointed that it happened off panel. Like. That, I think, SIU needs to work with that. All the Tower of God fights are typically really good, so it's annoying when they cut out a part of what would be a really good fight. Because I know if we got to see, say, Bomb vs. Elliot, that'd probably be one of my favorite fights. Or even this Rack vs. Indietta stuff. Already, from what we've seen in the past three chapters, this is one of, like, my favorite fights that we've had recently that I don't even know if that's fair to say because we've had a ton of good fights recently but I I think it really takes away from the chapter from the story and just from the fight itself just cutting away like that I think it hurts a lot um, doesn't completely ruin it I still think it was really good but it definitely makes it a lot less good and I mean a lot less good than it would have been if we had actually gotten to see that conclusion so basically, Rack was defeated along with Yu on Danwa, but they were able to injure Inietta. So that that's really cool. It's just, I don't know, I wish I would have been able to see it, you know? How they ended up being able to injure him and stuff, and or how Rack was at least. I'm assuming it was a 1v1 after Danwa and Yuwa were taken out. But um, yeah, we have to assume because we didn't get to see it. But then we cut to uh, what Zsa Zsa Bomb and Kuhn are doing, presumably heading back to meet up with the rest of the uh, group at the no-named area, because I'm pretty sure they were just at the named area with Ship and Hatsu, and now they have to move to the no-named area to meet back up with the allies, because that's where they were heading with the, uh, with the scrubs, I think. <laughs> I keep calling them the scrubs. So um, those three are headed there, and Bomb is, you know, thinking about and talking about, like, the situation with Andrasi's name, and you know, maybe if I just embrace Viol and embrace the godhood, then maybe I could do good for some people, and good, good man Kuhn has, an, has a great voice of reason speech trying to talk some sense into him, so I really, really enjoyed that speech, and um... The way that it was explained was explained really good in the blog. The blog, like, said that because, you know, Bomb hasn't really been around that many people, that doing something that causes harm or something or misfortune to somebody else is really hard for him because he hasn't been around people. So causing just people misfortune is something new and something that he's really wary of, whereas Kuhn, from a different perspective, has no problem, pretty much, with causing misfortune to others. So, it's a really different um, perspective. I, I think that causing misfortune to others is bad, of course, but I also think that Kuhn is right with its bomb's power. He should use it to save who he wants to save, and it's not up to anyone to decide but him. So, I think that's kind of the best way to put it. So I did like that. 
Also in the blog, SIU does mention that, uh, oh, then there's also this really cute picture of um, Hatsu and his family before he left to climb the tower. But back on the main point, um, SIU talked about Rack having like a special power, like a wilderness power, I guess that's his sort of um, animal instincts, you know. And uh, beyond that, he also had a lot of growth, and I'm pretty sure what he meant to say like by this, I'm not sure how trustworthy these... Um, these translations always are. But what he was kind of meaning to say was more like this was something really important for Rack's growth. And I think it's going to turn out to be really important. I think a loss to Inietta here, even with Danwon Yiwa's assistance, is really going to help Rack as a character. Um, and also seeing him be so badass and hold out that long against Inietta as well. Um, also, like I said, Inietta is just so freaking powerful. And that's another thing said in the blog is that Inietta would be incredibly powerful even without a sword. He'd be monstrously s strong even if he didn't have a sword. So with one and with Krishna at that, he is a complete badass now. But that's something because I thought it was going to be like, okay, we're taking out these bosses. This is going to be quick. This isn't going to be hard. But with the team ship versus team coon civil war stuff sort of making some strains between people and with seeing how strong kaiser and the bosses are this could like this is going to be a lot more exciting than i was expecting and like going into this i thought it was going to be a quick arc but we have so much this arc we've gotten so much already and i'm really hyped to see where it goes from here because it still has a lot of great stuff for us to see we still have to see a lot about kaiser and i I freaking love Kaiser. And we still have a lot to see with Inietta and the other bosses too. And maybe it was one of the other bosses that are like, cause, cause I'm pretty sure Ship said like two or three of the bosses are monstrously strong. So if like there's another boss or two that's like almost Inietta level, that's, it's going to be a lot of good fights. I, I also want to see a good Sachi fight since they're like saying that, you know, they can't take Sachi alone or whatever. I'm really excited to see if Sachi will get a really good fight in this arc. So um, yeah, other than that, I already kind of said my main thoughts. Is My main thoughts were pretty much everything about this was really enjoyable and I really loved the fight. It's just that the... It's just that not seeing the conclusion, just not actually seeing it, really takes away a ton for me. But even with all that it takes away, I still think that the chapter in the fight was pretty damn solid. And I still really enjoyed it. Um, I wasn't even that pissed off about not seeing the conclusion because it was so enjoyable, even though I do feel robbed of the conclusion. But, um, yeah, so I'd give this one, like, <laughs> like 8 boost power-ups out of 10. Good, really, really good even, 8 out of 10, geez, but, um... I don't, just a lot taken away, I feel. And uh, that's it. So, long review again, almost 50 minutes. But um, thank you all so much for watching. Like if you did like this video, comment down there, tell me what you thought of the chapter and what you thought of my thoughts on it. Um, subscribe for more Tower of God, One Piece, Walking Dead, and a bunch more. Uh, got a lot of new stuff coming, um, and it'll be interesting, hopefully. Got something new I want to do for the channel that I'll probably talk about in detail in uh, this week's Hot Q&A, which will be tomorrow, I guess. And, um, yeah, follow on Twitter if you want for updates and stuff like that. Um, and that's it. Sorry I said I'm a lot there, but thank you for watching once again, and I'll see you all next time.